The subject for this month's Animal Artist Collective video is uh, reptiles and I have decided to draw the eastern box turtle. Reptiles aren't really something that I'm used to drawing or have ever drawn before so this was going to be quite a challenge but um, really quite exciting for me to do. The Animal Artists Collective was founded to provide a platform for emerging artists, uh, promote positive messages for animal welfare and conservation and connect artists to their communities. This intimate group of artists strive to support one another, uphold the collaborative's core values and engage with their audiences on social media through thoughtful animal-centred artwork. The members of the Animal Artists Collective are also committed to help support both local and global animal welfare and conservation efforts by selling the artwork produced and donating portions of their proceeds to charity. The eastern box turtle is one of six subspecies of the common box turtle. It has a high domed, rounded, hard upper shell called a carapace. The vivid orange and yellow markings on its dark brown shell distinguish it from other box turtles, as do the four toes on its hind feet. Its distinct colouring camouflages it among the damp earth, fallen leaves and other debris found on the floor of moderately moist forests. The underside of its shell, called a plastron, is dark brown and hinged. All box turtles have this bilobed plastron, which allows them to almost completely shut their shell. When threatened, the box turtle pulls its head into its shell and waits for the danger to pass. Its shell is also unique in that it can regenerate. In one reported case, the carapace of a badly burnt box turtle completely regenerated. The eastern box turtle is not considered endangered on a national level. However, some states, including Michigan, New Hampshire, Massachusetts and Connecticut, list the animal as a species of special concern. And Maine lists the turtle as endangered. Habitat loss, traffic incidents and collection for the pet trade are all factors contributing to its decline. So I decided to draw the box turtle on graphics drafting film, a surface that I've been playing around with for, for quite a long time actually. Um, it's a really, really smooth surface but takes a, quite a lot of layers which is surprising considering its smoothness. Um, I have used three brands of pencils I think on this, I think there was the Luminance, the Polychromos and the Derwent drawings. So this is a Derwent drawing that I'm using at the moment, the black Derwent drawing. The Derwent drawings are the most gorgeous pencils for using on the drafting film. They are, they're wax based, they're very soft, they have quite a thick core as you can see on this, on the lead of the pencil here, and have a really, really rich pigment. So the black is really black. Um, I tend to use my blacks with other colours, but for something like this, uh, you know, a relatively speedy drawing, just the black on its own kind of merging in with that yellow works really, really well. I tend to experiment quite a bit with my drawing surfaces and tools that I use and one thing that I did a little bit of experimenting with this piece was with wax paper. Uh, so you can see me putting the wax paper over the top of the this finished sort of like head of the turtle here. Um, making marks over the top of it uh, where all sort of like the little creasy bits and everything are on the turtle's head and what the wax paper does is where you add pressure over the top of the drafting film it picks up the pigment so you end up with these lovely little sort of um, well extra texture I suppose and you get a fineness to the texture rather than using a Tombow eraser or you know a scotch tape doesn't really work very well on drafting film so using the stylus that I'm doing here and just adding the texture in over the top of the um, the drawing that I've got underneath it's it's just a really nice way of getting those tiny little bits of uh, extra texture in there and I think it works really quite nicely if you have never tried drafting film before for using your colour pencils, I would definitely recommend that you give it a go. I've never got on well with smooth paper and my preferred surface has been uh, Clairefontaine Pastel Matte, which is really quite textured. And drafting film is almost like the polar opposite of that. However, I do find that the majority of my techniques that I use on Pastel Matte, I can use in a very similar way on the drafting film, which sounds absolutely crazy because there's no tooth to speak of it's a very smooth paper and, and it is so different to pastel matte but I can layer I can get 
oh gosh, around 10, 15, maybe a little bit more uh, layers on the drafting film. Um, I can get really fantastic depth of colour. If I want, I can go in on the back and create even more depth. Um, I can use all sorts of different pencils on there. I can use my favoured uh, subtraction technique where I put my pigment in and then, you know, take, take it out to create extra layers. And I don't have the frustration of being able to um, cope with all of the tooth, um, you know, right from the beginning with, with it looking gritty and grainy and everything. I, I, I love pastel matte and I will continue to use pastel matte, but drafting film is a really lovely alternative if you don't get on with um, smooth papers. So I tend to use, you can see here, the Tombow Mono Eraser a lot in my pieces, either for subtraction or, particularly in this piece here, to help smooth. Now something I do use a lot in my drawings is black. And I know that that is probably a colour that many people say, oh, you know, you shouldn't be using, um, you know, mix your colours and everything. And I would absolutely wholeheartedly agree, you know, mix your colours up, create some really, really gorgeous, rich colours. But black is very, very useful, um, especially for black animals and especially for dark areas like this. And I tend to use my black um, as, a, as, a, as a black, either on its own or sort of like combined with other colours but I'll also use it as a tone. So if I've got black in my hand and I've created a dark area and I need something that's a little bit lighter, I will use it as a tone or, or a tint. And I find that to be really, really useful. I'll also use it over the top of other colors to sort of deepen and darken them. Do be careful though when using it over warmer shades like yellows and oranges because it can make it go a little bit greeny. I have to say the Derwent Drawing Black is a particularly black black and one of my favorites. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been uh, giving you a little bit more information about the box turtle. Don't forget to check out the other artists in the Animal Artist Collective uh, and, uh, and subscribe to my YouTube.